Linden. Uh, so Kermit is one of the new Lindens that has joined the Web and Tools team as a new product manager here. So please be nice to Kermit. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you. Uh, so I was going to give Kermit a chance just to introduce themselves and just what their role and uh, what they're doing here at the lab. Yeah, hi everyone. I'm a senior product manager for the uh, tools and payment team. So dealing with uh, all things payments, internal tools, um, support side. So thank you, everyone. Nice to meet you. Thanks, Kermit. Uh, so I wanted to just start off with is if, if anybody has any questions that they're they really are just burning to ask, um, go ahead and shoot those over uh, and we can go with those first and then I've got some questions for y'all. Cool. All right. So I'll go ahead and get started. Um, one of the big questions I'm interested in is if you use uh, Flickr or any other image hosting uh, site out there, what's the main reason that you tend to use it for? In regards to like running a marketplace store. Hi. Um, Sassy here. Can I answer this one quickly? <laughs> yeah, go for it. Hi. I don't usually use voice, but this is about Flickr. So, um, originally, like, only a few bloggers used Flickr, like, back in the 80s of SL, 2006, 2007. And um, we used it for embedding. That was its main purpose, embedding on our websites. So, Blogspot. Um, WordPress, things like that. And I think that that is still the case for the majority of, well, was the case for the majority of people was embedding. Then it became stores had groups. So they were able to get everything piled in. And then after that, it was uh, now micro blogging has become a thing where people are blogging just using Flickr and not using websites at all. So they post credits in in the Flickr as well. Um, I don't think that anybody can use it for marketplace as such uh, unless they're premium. So it's sort of a cancel get your ca account cancelled if you use it for commercial uses and you're not pro. Interesting. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's an interesting bit about using Flickr as a way to introduce new products. Is it kind of you take a picture of a product um, and then post it on Flickr, or you just use Flickr to host the image and then you post it somewhere else? Sometimes it's words in, uh, work in progress as well to keep people enticed. So they like to sort of say, hey, this is the project I'm working on. It's coming soon to my store. So it gets people um, G'd up before the actual release goes out. And then they also know where it's going to be, what event it's going to be at, if it's going to be a store item, things like that. Also, it's being used a lot now for... Uh, um, 
what's it called? Like uh, giveaways. So people are like, comment, leave your name, and then uh, we'll pick people to give this pack to, etc. Oh, okay, so uh, you might follow someone, you might use it to post to your blog to show like a work in progress, but some people actually just follow others on Flickr to see the pictures pop up. Correct. And then that and, and that might actually lead them to their need, store. Right, and it means that they don't need group spaces. So a lot of people used to have to join a group in World, but with the limitation of groups, now people have access to everybody's new release notes rather than, well, anybody that flickers. Um, everybody's release notes um, that way. Uh, and they can also see who blogs it, who features it in a picture, things like that as well through the groups. So if Go Go Gorgeous, who just arrived, um, posts uh, a new skin that somebody released a couple of days before and her skin pictures are in their group, uh, a person might see that they have the same head as GoGo, -Go, they like to wear the same hair colour as GoGo, -Go. then they understand that it'll, it'll look really good on them compared to what the ad might have looked like. So it's a, it's a, a great sort of pool to wade in, in that sense. Thank you. That was a really detailed answer. I really found that important. Thank you. Boa noite a todos. Algum brasileiro? Muitos lindem, muitos lindem aqui, mas cadê o dono do SL? Strawberry. So I think somebody mentioned earlier that like groups you use it instead of groups because groups has restrictions is it that you're in too many groups like why specifically um it would be too many groups i mean i've i've, I've speak to, spoken speak to, sorry spoken oh my goodness spoken about this a lot of times too where uh, a commercial sort of account would be incredibly useful you'll have somebody like valeth or uh, designers that are in multiple events and all those events require groups. Just Hair Fair alone is like four different groups every year. Uh, and then it just sucks them up. So even if you're pro, even if you're a premium account holder in Second Life, just by being a successful business or trying to run a successful oh, business. Oh, kind of a point there. So having the resources to just sort of say, I don't have to run multiple accounts to try and get as many group spaces as I need. I don't have to worry about offlines. I can just go into Flickr and browse through it. It's essentially Second Life's Pinterest. Okay. That's but we analogy. need an alternative because a lot of people can't afford it. Oh, yes, I also tend to think that Second Life uses um, infiltrate and maybe uh, disrespect Flickr a little bit um, or a lot. Uh, with There's a lot of adult generated content on Flickr that, whew, and, <laughs> and uh, things that should be kept in-house. If Second Life had their own photo site, they would be able to say, put your adult content here, put your commercial content here, you know, and and if if there were 
pro perks, premium perks that we could pay into, it would mean that uh, it could be in-house. Uh, Second Life could do it where you pay through Second Life and that keeps everybody's uh, budgeting and, and money in the same sort of place. And it would give more of a sense of community as well because it wouldn't be so uh, spread out. I created a bloggers group in Flickr 17 years ago or something and there's something there's hundreds now but they all do the same thing but people find the ones that they find and add photos to them but essentially they're the same thing so it gets spread out a little bit too far for people to keep a handle on uh, I'm not sure if anyone here has used Flickr for doing giveaways before. I think you mentioned earlier that someone might post a picture and say, if you comment or like or something, uh, you'll get a giveaway. I I'm just curious, like, what, what, why do a giveaway through there? There are hundreds of them. <laughs> um, the, 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 I don't, it's, personally, I don't like them because I wish they did them in world. I wish that they uh, said, in their group to their customers that are buying that they they do the giveaway but that's my personal thing but they do them not just on Flickr they do them on Facebook all their social medias they'll do something like that um, but it helps the people that can't be online um, they might be at work they might be somewhere else it gives them access to a place where they can do it but they can also comment on you know hundreds a day um, and get that that chance of winning something people do it with their release photos often so it'll be like here this is our latest release if you put your name in you'll go into the pool so it also gives gives them a guaranteed look if people know that they're doing giveaways sometimes it's chuckle worthy because they haven't read anything that the person posting says and there is no giveaway but all of a sudden you'll see 200 people leaving their name because they're just used to doing it Uh, I'm curious about the comment about how it's easier to go through a Flickr feed than going through all your groups um, and looking at the notices. Is it just because it, it's easier to look at a lot of the different pictures and that can kind of give you a good idea of what you want to see or look at? Or is that kind of what it is? Well, they provide it. Uh, sorry. So if you just go to the ho your homepage, your personal homepage for Flickr, it's every photo of every person that you follow is just ah. there. So you can just look through things that way. You can go to your favorite, your in groups that you join to either post your photos or you join it because you want to follow them. So you just go to those photos. Uh, on any given month, I've had to look up certain designers or, or people that I know. I'll just look them up by name in Flickr because you can, of course, um, identify yourself as your Second Life name if you want to. So you can find somebody you might need to, I had to do that with all these name changes in SL. I had to find some designers because they'd change their names after sign up um, and I couldn't find them in world. So I looked in Flickr and luckily enough, I was able to find them that way and what their new name was. Um, so it's just, it's just an everything. Yeah, you can tag photos so they can say second life, they can say virtual world they can say all sorts of things that you know you can just search pink hair and you'll get either a group for pink hair or you'll get everybody's pink hair or things like that uh you can also tag creators so a lot of bloggers do that they'll actually write down the names of the people that are, have Flickr accounts that may be appearing in their photo as the creator of an item they're wearing so it's a it, it's just very it gives you all these sorts of different variations of use um, and and it's also a history. It's it's your second life history if you use it for second life. So I can go back to 2006 photos and go, whoa, 
I wore that. Look at those bling shoes. They're fabulous. Yeah, I think Garfield gave probably the closest version to Flickr, though it obviously is not the same thing. Okay, yeah, that was super informative. Thank you. You're welcome. So, um, one of the other things I wanted to ask was, uh, and you can type this in chat or pop up a mic or whoever, um, if you could write down, like, if you had, like, a magic wand, you could change one thing, or you could say, like, hey, I really have this specific problem. It doesn't have to be specific to web. It just remember that I can't obviously comment on things that aren't web-related. Um, I'm, I'm curious, like, what if, it, if you, we, we were in charge of Second Life and you could change one thing, what would it be? Okay, let's see. Does it work? Uh, if you can hear me, okay, excellent. So uh, I wasn't planning to get on voice today, but I guess I will. Um, so you know how on Amazon, when you have um, a product with, let's say, multiple colors or multiple um, versions of the product, on the product page itself, you can... Um, you don't have multiple product pages for that uh, for those versions. Instead, for on the product page itself, you can choose either the color in a drop down, or you have like those little buttons, the UI buttons that that you choose different versions. Um, the same thing could be utilized for uh, the marketplace. Um, that is to say, for example, you have uh, shoes. You're selling shoes that are uh, twenty different colors. Instead of having twenty different uh, marketplace pages for the same shoe in different colors, you can have a single page and a drop down. Uh, I have seen that before, uh, but just to make sure I'm understanding right, like, so I might go on something like another e commerce site like Amazon and see mm -hmm. uh, a t shirt, and I can on that same page select different versions of that t shirt. So it could be a blue shirt, a red shirt, or green shirt. I don't have to go to a different product page to just get a simple variation of that shirt. Is that, am I understanding that right? Exactly, plus uh, you don't have to see two, 20 different uh, versions of that shirt if you're just scrolling through, so you don't have to waste entire pages of loading. Um, and also, it's not just, just make sure to not just make it for colors. For example, a demo could be using the same, uh, uh, the same mechanism. Or, for example, people who sell uh, packs for different bodies, right? Same mechanism. It doesn't have to be a uh, drop-down necessarily. There are, um, like, buttons, and I will try to screenshot it in a moment. But, yeah, you're, you're uh, yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Looks like there's a lot of people in chat agree with you. See, when you typed uh, swatches, did you just mean to put watches? I'm curious if that's something else. For the uh, group's light comment, it, it, what, so it just notices and what would the permission controls, controls do? Is that for like land stuff? Also, in regards to the um, 
different versions of different items, like a blue shirt or a green shirt, or you know, adding a demo. This is actually something we've talked about a lot internally, um, and I, th I think it's a great idea. It's essentially turning it into how it's presented in world, because in world you usually have a main picture, and then you have little versions of the colors and the packs and everything underneath it but it takes up one eye space it doesn't you don't have to it's not like those horrible jevon vendors we used to have we used to have to press a button next color next color next color so sec if you search anything in in marketplace as it is now you do have to go through every person's color of that one item when you're just looking for options of that kind of item so depending on on you know if you want to um hair packs are a bit different now they're often just sold as one but yeah if it was shoes or something like that it would be you know you want mary janes well one store could have three sets of mary janes but they'll have 30 of each color so it's three pages in before you get to see somebody else's version of a shoe Okay, so what I pasted a uh, screenshot shows both mechanisms of uh, choosing something on Amazon and I would like a version for either one or both of them. So it's not necessarily forced into either. Um, that would be perfect because sometimes you want to just have a list of versions, which is maybe it's a giant list, maybe you have 20 colors or maybe you want like small visual buttons. That'll help. Um, <clears throat> Another thing I would, um, if we're set, if we're making requests, I guess, uh, it would be as a customer, I would like to ban from my um, from a marketplace search certain vendors. Like, for example, I never want to see something by a certain shop. Um, I'd like to be able to ban it or unban it alternatively. So if you do a search um, and you see, this is just, you know, an idea, um, not saying that this is exactly what you're trying mm -hmm. to say, but you might have a search result. Like, let's say you search for car and then you see a bunch of results. You might want to click on that result and say, don't show me results for this store again. Yes, exactly. Not necessarily, um, you don't want to prevent them from shopping at your store. Uh, and you don't want maybe to prevent yourself from ever going to that store again, but you don't particularly want them to appear in search results anymore. Yeah, uh, for me, obviously, yes. Uh, also, I imagine that uh, I've had a fair amount of vendor of, of uh, friends who also have vendors on Marketplace. Now, as a vendor, not as a customer, who would like an ability to ban specific problematic customers, if that is at all possible from their marketplace pages. Now, I'm sure that's a lot more complex. I mean, anything is definitely possible. I'm, I'm curious what, so somebody coming to your store, you don't want them to shop there anymore? Uh, why, is it maybe reviews or something? Um, no, I don't think it's reviews from, um, I think there was a lot of uh, problems with gifting from uh, problematic accounts that uh, kind of uh, got, Bands trailed to the vendors themselves eventually. I'm, I don't quite remember how it was, but I imagine every Sometimes store has some. Uh, say again? Sorry, Valis. I was just I saying, hear... sometimes people are just horrible and having oh, yeah. them interact in your day. Um, I've, I've done customer service for 17 years here and there have been uh customers that have caused such horrible experiences for the people i've worked for that having those customers appear is so triggering for them and I, I know it sounds very it's just a horrible thing so you have somebody that will be in your iron box and be abusive and cause problems and then just think and and it might result in banning very few times i've ever banned anybody but 
um, it might result in that, but then that person can just buy on Marketplace and it sort of is a bit of a slap in the face to the controls that people are given in world versus the controls that which you give us as Lindens and then it's not given in Marketplace. Um, so it's sort of an extension of that. Vendor systems now have banning, uh, but Marketplace doesn't, so it falls short just there. Yeah, some paying customers are net negative. That's just a fact. And an ability to filter those out, to just not have them anymore, I imagine will be helpful. No, that's, that's cool. On the note about reviews, sorry, in creative, uh, uh, creators supporting creators group that we're in in Discord, Balath and I and Gorgeous are in it, and I think some other people are in it as well. Um, a creator m made a request um, about a month ago, and I was like, please come to this this meeting, and I'm, I have no idea if she's here because I can't find it. But somebody asked, um, if Marketplace could ever have the option of clicking on a person's review name in the review and going to a page in Marketplace that showed all their reviews, like how other sites do, um, so that you could sort of say, this person left a good review. Wow, they always leave good reviews. I'm going to start paying attention to what they review because that might be good shopping for me. Or this person just seems to be really rude to everybody. So I'm just going to, you know, minus them from my brain as being valid when it comes to reviewing. Things like that. Oh, okay. And and also for that, um, yeah, if, if, if somebody is also only reviewing one brand but always leaving five stars so something's not quite kosher there so hey that's again something that i'll this is not my idea i really want to find the girl's name so that she gets all the credit for that but yeah it was it's such a good idea because it as as i said too it, it could mean that you start looking um at able i hope i said that right able they um, is always really review conscious and she always puts these things out in a specific way. So I'm just going to shop via her from now on, that kind of thing. I think it would be really useful for Marketplace. Yeah, I never considered that you would want to read other people's reviews for other items that aren't your own. Um, that's a great point. Uh, something that would be super helpful um, would be if you ever ha find anyone uh, that it would be an example of someone, I would love to follow this person and see their reviews. Um, feel free to message me and world it. I, I would love to take a look. Yeah, there's some there's some reviews that are just good they they get it they understand the review structure they understand what leaving a review on a marketplace item is actually for and then there's the ones that will leave one star because they're trying to get the seller's attention because they thought the socks were blue but they're red instead of contacting them in world for customer service and that just throws everything out so if there was a review if there's a review that is actually these these socks look great and I was really surprised that they actually fit in size shoes and I'm so grateful for that and it's a good thing and et cetera, et cetera. You sort of go, well, I like how this person reviews things. I might have a look at what else they've reviewed. Uh, Dark Rover, I wanted to ask a little bit more on your comment around custom lists to say favorites. Is that like, uh, like, uh, for example, on other websites, I've seen things where it's like, I can have five different wish lists that people can view, like ones for gifts or ones for Christmas or something. <laughs> Is this like your own list that you would view or would it be public facing? Yes. Yeah, I can hear you.
with marketplace also sorry to to um step in there uh the way the newest first uh relevant first comes up what's the default because I think that we think that newest first should be default, not I seem to always get relevant. And so you end up saying something that's five years old versus something that came out last week. And that seems to be a problem for some stores because their best work is not being shown first. That is a great question. Um, it depends on a couple different things. So if we're looking at someone's store specifically like if i was to go to your store um and let's say i'm logged in it depends on the last time i selected a sort so if, if i have gone to someone's store and i selected best selling at some point we we assume that that's what you want to keep viewing so we keep that selected but if you ha if you're not logged in or you've never actually picked one before the default is new is first for looking at someone's store if you're looking at like a general product search, um, not at someone's specific store, then relevance is the ah, default one. That's what it is, um, okay. But it, sometimes people can get confused because they may go to a store, uh, change the sort order, and then go to another store and it's the same sort order again. Uh, it, it's just simply we go with, if you've decided to pick a different sort order, we were like, oh, okay, so that's the one you want. We don't want to change it on you. Uh, but if you haven't selected one, the default is newest first for stores and the default for product search is relevance. And Maybe. this is something also that we continuously look at to see. So we're, we're totally open to suggestions of what the default should be or what the behavior should be. But that is something what we're currently looking at. What about a settings option for you as a user? What if you just had, if you went to your own, your own settings as, as yourself and you could just make it a, a question, what would you prefer to be your default? And then you just choose it. And then, of course, you can override it in the moment, but if, but your default will always go to that. Because some people might want best selling, some people might want lowest to highest. You know, if I'm searching Garcha items and I'm searching a specific Garcha item, I'll use the drop down to be the cheapest ones first because they're all over the place in prices. Um, and when I want a store, I want to see their newest first. So it does change. But if my default was able, my default personally was able to be newest first, then that would be, it would save me some clicking. I definitely like the idea of being able to go into your settings and set what you prefer default sort order would be. Um, I mean, a lot of people come, that, a lot of people come up with this question because they don't even know that when they select a different sort that it saves that as their default sort. So obviously it's confusing. Yeah. Some people don't even realize that the drop down is there. Banner blindness. That happens. as well. So they just think, so that actually hurts with, with newer customers and things like that as well. But the other thing on that same vein is that when you go to a store by name, if you search me, for instance, and you just go to the merchant page, the pictures that come up, uh, I don't even know how they get chosen. So that's another one. If we had the opportunity to present our best work first would be really helpful because older stores are at such a disadvantage because the items that are getting shown are sculpts, system layers versus the mesh that they produce now. And it doesn't seem to change. I had to unlist items just to get rid of some. Okay, I'm really interested on the on the pictures comment. Um, is it like the thumbnail of a product? Yeah, you get a thumbnail of like five products or something when you go to somebody's merchant page. So, uh, for instance, let's have a look. Let's bring up Valith because <laughs> I have no. Uh, I don't have a merchant pla uh, page yet. Oh, okay. So, um, okay. All right. So I'll do my own. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there's, there's a screenshot of, uh, some of my first items, but they're not my newest items or they're not. So it looks like, it looks like that. Mine's, mine's sort of not really, um, a good point, but you might look up something. <laughs> much older and it's really old content in general oh. there just needs to be a, a big overhaul of a lot of features on marketplace 
and that is um, categories for uh, merchants to be able to maybe classify um, okay, this is all old school sculpt stuff, you know, and maybe that goes back also again to um, custom categories for merchants or fixed categories or both. Both would be ideal, of course. Um, there's just so much to get into that we could probably be here for weeks talking about it. But one big okay. thing we still need, especially since um, um, the default for um, the generic search is relevance. Um, we need to know when an item was first posted and when it was last updated or the listing at least was last updated. Um, that really, really helps with kind of figuring out, you know, um, how recent uh, the, um, let's say, technology they used, um, you know, is the technology that they used for creating their items uh, because it's not always um, discernible via um, the pictures or the item description. Um, it's just really um, also, I think the search results need to be a little bit more flexible and not rely on um, exact typing um, or except, well, it's, ki it's kind of iffy, you know, a lot of times you go and you search for a very specific item um, and you type it in exactly as it is, um, let's say, listed in world or what the item name should be. And you don't get any results if because maybe you um, omitted the, um, um, the little um, brand tag that um, merchants a lot of times add to the beginning of their item. So let's say, you know, store name and then what the item name is. So if you just type in the item name and you don't have the um, store name with it, it search might not find it. Uh, but then, for example, recently I found that searching for Palais, and I'm going to type that in, comes up with a lot of results for Paladin, which is really, really odd because most of the time it's the search seems to kind of balk if you don't have an exact spelling of an item. And then uh, with this except, example, for example, you end up getting a whole bunch of results that um, include something that is similar to it. We kind of need to see that more, but um, then also easily controlled. So, of course, I had to then search for Palette this way to get um, what I was looking for, and that, that worked in that case. Um, I think there should be a, a little hover tip um, letting people know that they now have no control over the search results. Um, and so that's great, like but they still... I'm sorry? Sort of like an autofill would work too. So if you started to write PAL, it would start to fill in yeah. or bring up all the PAL stuff. That's actually really smart. That, like, could, like even that here, could be helpful like, to you. Yeah, if I start writing One second, okay. and it will fill in syntax. So oh, well, that might be a bit harder because, that? yeah, I don't know how hard that would be to um, implement because, of course, that then that then has to look at the massive database of possible results to pull from, but um, it would be nice to see as a user, of course. It, there actually is a little hover tip above the search box that says this in the question mark next to keywords. Yeah, it's just, I don't, people need to have it a little bit more in their face, um, like in their face, like really big blinking in their face, because they will not notice um, subtle. Um, little pointers, sadly. I'm curious, you said something earlier that caught my attention. It was like, uh, they may use their branding in their product title. And then so when you're searching for the product name, it doesn't come up in the results because of that? Like, yeah, is, is some... it like the store name or something? Yes, a lot of times the store name or the abbreviation that they use, you know, like for example, uh, blueberry dash, you know, space dash, item name, space, item name, or however, you know, stores might, I don't know if Sassy, maybe you might have an example for how you um, name your products. And, um, you know, it's generally really great for finding your items in inventory for that merchant, but um, it makes it harder to uh, find a marketplace if you're looking for a specific item and maybe you don't know exactly um, how that brand tags their items. Um, right. So right. basically, if you don't know how, if you, sorry, if you don't know how the, the listing starts, you often don't get results. And I have even seen it <clears throat> when I'm on a page, I can actually see the listing on the page, but when I type it into search, exactly one of the keywords that is in the uh, subject title, it will not pull it up in search, which is, which is really iffy, of course.
guess uh, brand tags in general, um, it would be nice if there was a way to kind of do that where you don't have to have your brand tag in your marketplace listing. I mean, some people don't realize that you don't have to put your brand tag in the listing, but um, and you can just have it in the object contents to have it still show like that in the inventory. But um, a lot of creators do just put their brand tag at the start of their product name and it can make it hard to find things. Uh, curious, why, why do you use brand tags? So when you're searching your inventory, it's very easy to find stuff from that specific creator. So if I have a pair of socks from one creator, uh, like, or a pair of goggles from, say, so our, our, our brand is like a uh, Greeble, right? So if I wanted to find something that was brag, like tagged from Greeble, I would put like brackets, GRB brackets, and then it gives us all of that just from our brand. And if I wanted to like that from, I wanted socks, but I know that I want the socks from the other brand, I put their tag in and pretty much every major SL brand does the little bracketed or colon tag at the start of their product. Yeah, um, if 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 we were going and, and that's really useful, we need that because you know, um, let's say you're you're looking for right now. If I search for Mustang in my inventory, I get a bunch of results, so I wouldn't know which one I really I'm really looking for <laughs> unless I hopefully have maybe a folder that says which one it is uh, from which store it is. You know, which one I'm do I want to pull out right now? Uh, I don't want to have to pull out every single one and look at them to try to remember, okay, yeah, this thing looks like that, and then create a folder for it maybe with custom tags, which, I mean, we already do anyways for the most part, but um, we don't want to have to necessarily do it for everything. Now, if we were to encourage um, merchants to not use their tags um, in their listings on Marketplace, I think then there should be a separate option to show who um, the creator is of the item or the merchant of the item. Kind of, you know, when you look at Amazon listings and it, you can check and see who all sells um, that specific item and it shows their name because when we search for items, we often uh, are searching for um, um, the creations of certain known um, um, makers. Um, because we're, you know, looking for a certain style of the item or for a certain quality. So um, completely omitting that I think would not be great. I think and back to search, maybe uh, just fixing search where it is more intelligent um, would fix that and we wouldn't even have to address that in the first place. A lot of the uh, character usage was uh, reminiscent uh, remnants of the older days too because Second Life merchants discovered that whether you use brackets, semicolons, tilde, exclamation marks, it's how it's stacked in inventory. So everybody wanted to be at the top of people's inventory so they used exclamation marks. Um, if you used a tilde you were at the bottom, it didn't matter what the alphabet was, if you used the character you ended up in a stacking order uh, and then that carried over into being how they branded their brand name and then that carried over to marketplace but marketplace seems to just read it as one big word so the more underscores as as was explained you put in or things like that it can't understand blueberry anymore it just understands underscore blueberry underscore red underscore poncho underscore slink <laughs> so it just becomes this big long-running um a sentence sort of thing um now with search being able to use pluses you can just go into your inventory and write blueberry plus poncho and you'll get the poncho you want or you can write poncho plus pink um and then you'll get all the ponchos you own that are in pink and i don't know why i said poncho but anyway that's the point <laughs> Uh, what? So that was super interesting. One of the things I'm curious about what you said was that people want to be at the top of residence inventories. Um, oh, why? Is it just because it keeps people top of mind? Like, or maybe if it someone else is like, it, go ahead. Matter. It doesn't matter now, but it used to matter. Out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. We have 127 stores, for instance. 
people wanted to be the top because people didn't clean their inventories. So it used to be that they would be at the top, even if they, because they were competing with what they thought, you know, an A name, a B name, a C name. So it, if, if they were a Z name, they could be at the top and not forgotten at the bottom of somebody's in inventory. But now we have so many and now we have better search terms and people sometimes clean their inventories and sort them alphabetically themselves or by design or by type. So it's sort of become uh, redundant, but people see other stores doing it and they don't necessarily know what the history behind having done it is. They just do it. So, <laughs> so now you have stars and celestial planet sort of symbols happening around people's store names and, and it just creates confusion. But in, in Marketplace, the reason that they still do it in the name is because you want to make sure you don't already have it in your inventory from buying it at an event or at a store and things like that. Uh, so I am uh, just going through all the different suggestions, which are, these are all great, by the way. Um, I heard a couple people pipe up and say, hey, uh, we really want to know when this product was last updated and when it was listed in the marketplace. And then I, I also saw someone say the last time the person logged in to the marketplace. But I'm really curious on that one specific one. What, why do we want to know the last time someone logged in? Is it because then we know they're more active for like customer service? Yes. But I would let very strongly um, discourage the delisting the items. I mean, um, you know, having that maybe visible so people know this person maybe doesn't log into marketplace is one thing, but um, delisting them is kind of a horrible idea because there's still a lot of older items that are still of very great quality that people very regularly um, look for. And um, it would be really, really sad um, to have those items just suddenly disappear. Rather than a last login day, I would, I would uh, greatly prefer um, being able to list custo uh, customer support people or managers in there instead, because a lot of stores will use a store account to list their things on the marketplace so that the creator is not spammed by lots of customers wanting stuff. And they usually, there are quite a lot of people who will delegate that responsibility out to another like member of their group. Um, yeah, if, if you have I managers for, on your store account, you should have them listed in your store page. That's a really good idea. Because because if it, if that if you were to do that with with our store, like we have a separate account that because we 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 collaborate, um, and we all kind of sell through one, we sell through one account, and then it, we do a revenue distribution. But if you were to check when that account last logged in, it will be not even close to representative for when we're actually oh, around. So uh, that would be my immediate worry about that. That's that's really, really good point, because if you trust them enough to be your store manager in world and you've got given the managerial rights on the thing, it should be it should be obvious to the customer as well who they can sort of contact in in case of needing customer service. Um, it's a really good idea. It could even be in the in the top part where the banner is who who you can contact. Well, you wouldn't have to necessarily do this via account sharing. You uh, should be able to delegate certain functions and then uh, have granular options on what exactly you're delegating to a specific person. Um, just like you, you know, can with lots of other system or ticketing systems and so on. Um, that would be a great feature of considering how most start, uh, stores are being managed nowadays. Mind you, make sure that you ask permission to do that because I'd suddenly appear on at least a dozen stores. Audi. Someone added you as support for stores that you didn't say you wanted to support for? Oh, no, no, no. I mean, if you suddenly outed everybody that you can contact just by uh, who's okay. got the controls, I'd suddenly appear everywhere. So that's probably not as something you would want to do by default. It would have to be a the owner of the store could actually click a button and say, okay, show this person, show that person, but don't. No, I'm talking about granular. No, of course the, um, the delegation would have to be initiated by the store owner and not right. just some random person who wants to be part of it. That wouldn't make sense. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, 
as in the Lindens don't just flick a switch and everybody that's got access to an account is suddenly visible. I just mean that, yeah, you'd, you'd want to make sure that that's um, an opt-in sort of thing. But back to, back to what was said about older items, and I know you're trying to clear up Marketplace and saying, you know, if people haven't logged in or people haven't done that, uh, their stuff should be removed. And while cleaning up is a great idea, if you had actually done that uh, a few years ago, uh, I think Bakes on Mesh would have plummeted and been not as popular and as easy to do as it had been because all of us went scurrying to all those old marketplace listings and grabbed as many system layer items as we could that that may be gone for a decade, um, but their items were still available and we were able to get all those items and really get into bomb. Um, yeah, exactly that. I went um, deep diving. I found that Cute even still had listings and hit them up. Whippet and Buck still had listings and hit them up. And while the, the creators aren't around, that stuff is treasure. Uh, so if it was gone, it would be be horrible and not everybody goes straight into a mesh body uh, you need to give them a chance I can understand wanting to clean some things up but again if if you did what Valid said and started using swatches you'd clean up anyway because I those, think those uh, things would get reduced what what if instead of completely getting rid of these things because I think right now it is if the user hasn't logged in in a year and an item he hasn't sold in what a year or so it's going to be delisted or, or something like that what if instead of doing that um, we have a separate section of um, the marketplace where items you know that would normally be delisted move to there so and uh, yeah like in you know marketplace archive um, these are items where either the user isn't around anymore or items that don't sell very often legacy section that sounds kind of cool <laughs> well, then that, that, that would be actually a pretty cool name for it i think um because yes yeah, like um sassy said there's still so much old content out there from people who haven't been around that is still interesting and cool to be able to get and um, that people really want to still be able to acquire or at the very least look at, you know, I mean, it's just, there's a lot of um, SL history that disappears with um, these kinds of deactivations. Sometimes you just want to go on a nostalgia trip and go try and show people things that we all used to use like 10 years ago. And you end up going through those really old listings and breaking out really old, silly vehicles and outfits and stuff. And you can only find that because they haven't been delisted, even though the creator left years ago. <laughs> even for modesty sense as well like you know when bomb bomb was introduced it was a, it was just oh, i love bomb so much um it, to be able to get system underwear you know to be able to throw that on and now i will never be naked again <laughs> so it, it's just impossible now because the system layer just stays there and and you know for people that are newer to SL and, and they might not be as raunchy or open to that, you know, I'm able to suggest sometimes I've had somebody quite modest say everything's tummy bearing, they can't handle it, but you can point them in the direction of system layers and old accounts that might have done tank tops and things like that, that they can wear under those items. Newer creators are not tending to do them. We lost so many fantastic texture artists when, when Mesh went, um, became the thing and even applies it was just too much for them so so being able to still access that would be great archiving would be awesome sort of like what you do with regions you can put them to sleep maybe where they don't come up unless they're actively in the archive section looking for an item this is all great yeah i i love this feedback um one of the questions I have about uh, items that may have been like delisted because they were older it, is it what's the number one reason that we want to keep them? Is that we just really love those items? We may want to uh, have them in our inventory and use them for certain things, or is it more? I think somebody talked about how it was like I, I may need the system layers for this for for making new things, or did I misunderstand that? 
I think there's various uses. Um, there's just, you know, going back to get examples. There's going, you know, finding something in world and you're like, okay, this would pr work perfectly for, you know, me in this project and trying to grab it. And then you can't find it. Um, there was an example I had brought up on a previous meeting of a canoe that um, uh, there's a canoe resort at a lot of um, the estates in SL that has an amazing canoe in it. Uh, and everybody wants that canoe and they can't find it anymore on marketplace. It just completely disappeared. And, um, you know, when I initially started asking about it because I wanted to get it myself and the person isn't around anymore, I ran into like a dozen people who were like, I've been looking for it too. If you ever find out how to get it, please let me know. So um, it's really one of those things where this comes up more often than you, you would think. Um, and I know that, you know, not maybe being in world as much and, you know, like tinkering with 50,000 things here and there, um, you might not come across it. But for a lot of people, it just comes up a lot that, you know, an item is still um, desired by quite a few residents and um, disappeared from marketplace. Sadly. I, would, I would suggest something like a vintage item filter rather than like a complete delisting and have it off yeah. by default. Yeah, or I even if... Realized, if so, sorry, just one, sorry. I just realized something. You already have the capability in our custom drop downs in inventory. It's one of GoGo's favorite things to actually search in terms of anything that's older than or, or newer than. So you can look at in just the last 12 months or you can make sure to show everything that's over five years old. What if you just put that in marketplace as an option to, to filter where you can actually can say, I, I don't want to see anything that's over three years listed. I do want to see everything that was listed between 2006 and 2011 because I'll know I'll get sculpties. I know I'll get system layers. If, if you already have that, tech with your with your filtering um right exactly you would be able to break that down that way so you can just say i don't i don't want anything that's older than six months old because there are that's why events are so successful so many people just don't want older stuff um, um but, i think that would yeah. be a nice additional option but i i'm i would guess that part of the reason to um delist items as you know to reduce database load or anything like that so maybe separating them out into um two separate ones if that is better i don't know if it would be better uh, would help maybe, i would say maybe, that the, the feature that you just suggested yeah, now i'm yeah. just saying it would be a nice feature in itself but not necessarily relating to the delisting issue that we talked about and by the way no there is there are, we have not been able to find another canoe like that with the um, quality of mesh texture uh, animations handling and a two-seater it's it's ridiculous somebody needs to make new awesome canoes in sl i guess yeah, a lot of it and is I'm looping back to that um that need to be able for customers to be able to tell how old a product is like it is it is a big struggle where you're playing this guessing game by kind of analyzing everything to try and work out just how old something is and whether I'm buying something that's from when Mesh first released and people were kind of working it out or whether I'm buying something that was released this year or it's it's just it's, it's still a little confusing as to why there isn't just a listing date like available somewhere for us to look at and make informed uh, purchasing decisions. It's it's true too. I've had customer services where, where situations where a customer has been absolutely irate because they've bought a swimsuit which looks fantastic on the model, but they had no uh, clear understanding that it was system layers and a sculpted um, piece between the breasts because we used to do that for the for the pretend stretch, um, and so they've bought it expecting it to be mesh or expecting it to be a pliers and it was neither and you can't you can't just keep doling out refunds for stuff like that because they have what they purchased you can't really know if they bought something by accident you can't know it wasn't just a friend telling them that that ill that's not mesh or something like there's so many things so just having a this is sculpted this is system layers this is older 
it, it helps the customers because newer customers also don't know to look at an ad and see that the hands aren't mesh and that's a giveaway of the age of the content. Uh, so Hi, I, if I may really jump in. Know that, um, I'm sorry. I, I do go back and read through everyone's comments in this chat. So don't don't feel um, like I, I maybe we missed something because I, I will definitely I know we always have like limited time and I would honestly be interested in doing this more often than monthly just because I really really enjoy the feedback and it helps me. I, I want to be an advocate for all of you so that I can bring this back to the team and give them all your good ideas. So I, I do go back and I do read through all of this chat. And, I, and honestly, at any point in time, if you feel like, hey, I've, I've got an idea or I've got a suggestion, feel free to message me in world, and I do read them all. Oh, there's a creator's chat Discord? Yeah, I'll definitely join that. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, these meetings, of course, they're always one hour. There are so many things that we can discuss and so many things to bring up. Um, overall, the marketplace interface, of course, um, feels a bit clunky. Um, I think for, especially for onboarding new users and new user experience, it's not necessarily great. There are some functions that are really, really slow. For example, if we, I add an, um, an item to the shopping cart, um, it's instant and you have a green banner that it's been added. But to add an item to, um, let's say your favorites or to your wish list, it's, um, you know, you got to wait and then it finally loads and then it goes to your wish list and maybe that's not even what you wanted. That should be similar to um, how you experience adding to a shopping cart. It should be just added with a green banner. This has been added to your um, favorites list or to your wish list. Um, and just overall, you know, some modernization and, um, you know, a lot of the things that have been mentioned in this meeting and probably um, in Discord and uh, on you know in other ways would pr be great to see that um, on Marketplace. Yeah, totally. Uh, okay, this has been a great uh, user group. I, I really appreciate all the feedback. This is great. Um, I will definitely uh, check out that Discord too, and I'm going to read through everybody's messages. And if at any point in time, like you feel like, um, hey, I've got this idea or something went wrong and you can feel free to message me and I'll get back to you. Yeah, anytime. I'm definitely here for all of you. Thanks, everyone. I hope to see you all again next month. Maybe these meetings need to be bi-monthly. Yeah, we might have to do that. There's always so much to cover. Anyways, uh, thanks for having these meetings so much. Um, it's one of the things that really made me more excited about SL again, just to see how Lindens get involved in the community. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Totally, that's why I'm here. Thanks, everyone. Hi. Okay, Syntax, just one second. There is actually a um, JIRA circling at the moment too about um, Marketplace um, has plummeted all their sales. Um, people are seeing a, a complete loss of revenue at the moment. Um, I'm not sure if you know it, but I'll throw it in your IM box, the link, so you can have a look at that in case that's something you need to have a look into. Feel free to message me the, uh, the link. Will. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Bye, Dark Over. That was awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm thinking with a drop in MP sales, uh, couldn't that be related to SL20B and the Shop and Hop? People are super busy right oh, now doing yeah. it was, everything else. It was before that that they um, did. It was something to do with the big change uh -huh. over at the moment okay. with, with how things are listed. You mean that was part yeah. of the search change? Yeah, it was the big changes to search made it impossible to find things and what was coming up was not, again, it was not their, their, their products properly, things like that. Yeah, and I also think that for, unless people, you know, attend these meetings or on the Discord or reading the blogs or anything like that, for the average shopper, it would not have been very obvious that there were changes um, and that they'd have to maybe 
change the way they're searching or anything like that, that, you know, that might be um, anything new in the background. So um, that was kind of actually disappointing that there wasn't a big, huge kind of banner letting people know, oh, we get all these new features, by the way, check this out and um, making them aware of it. Because again, um, you know, they're not going to notice subtle, tiny little question marks and stuff, sadly. I agree that there's unfortunately a big disconnect with what Linden's put out there and what the end user actually pays attention to. Um, even content creators, I mean, you often see a content creator in one of these groups say some bizarre thing <laughs> that's been out like for years as a creator possibility and they've just somehow completely missed the boat on how things work. Somebody actually asked recently, um, is it true we can now create alpha layers <laughs> and they make stuff Everyone. What? <laughs> Someone didn't know those existed? Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> what? I was using um, auto uh, alpha uh, setups on bodies. Oh my lord. No. Oh, well, because auto, it, there's, auto, it's auto, strange. Auto, 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 auto. Desperately. Yeah. They, they are the bane of my life. Like, I, it's use kind the, of... uh, I use the Belletza Jake and it has that terrible auto alpha bug where if you put a shirt on, your hands will like randomly <laughs> decide they want to play peekaboo. Um, oh my goodness. I just, I just want rid of auto alphas. They're, they're terrible for optimization. They cause loads of draw calls with all the meshes being sliced up. We have alpha layers. We have bomb. I'm yep, so awesome. desperate for SL to move on from that. Not only that, people aren't realizing that it means you can create better clothing. Like, how do people yeah. not realize that now doing a sharp V plunging neckline is possible, which you couldn't do with alpha cards? Right, people right. Were... The slices wouldn't line up with it before, right? Right. People were creating based on alpha cuts. Now they can let their freak flag fly. They can have a scooped back. They can have, you know, a completely b bizarre sort of element. You can to have their, all of that cool item. creative stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, a sleeve can be any length, not the 14 cuts of a, you know, it's, it's bizarre. <laughs> the sacred Maitreya cuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, I, I love it. I, I love bombs so much. I love making alphas for anything. You know, I love to be able to just put um, something on now. You try a demo on, it doesn't fit exactly right or it clips somewhere. And I go, I don't care what they provided. I can make my own alpha. I'm just super desperate for um, PBR bomb. So like bomb with layered materials. Um, oh, that's going to be the... possible with PBR? I've only seen not PBR in the first, de definitely not in the first update. That's coming later on. They need to get it going, is what I heard. Um, but it does kind of pave the way for sort of hacking it in the same way they've done the um, the PBR terrain. So the PBR terrain right. lets you layer up multiple materials and or textures, and they've they've sort of cheated a bit in how they've done it by swapping out the textures for materials. Um, if we can get the same thing with bomb that would be extremely nice i know it's a lot more complicated though than it looks as a uh, baking multiple materials onto each other is can, it can be messy but um if we can get that then we can stop using appliers for things like uh normal maps and specular maps and shine and stuff and i think that's a big uh, limitation for a lot of bodies and creators right now you'll find people tend to just have one map like one set of materials they use and then it's only really the color that they're changing out on a lot of objects um otherwise they have to use a lot of scripts to do it and if we could do that with bomb we could finally be so somewhat rid of appliers um oh that and uh bomb on animesh that would be nice if we could bomb our animesh attachments please that would be good <laughs> I don't even actually understand what happened with Animesh and, and the limitations that we got. We got this amazing feature and then it was like, but you can only wear one. <laughs> oh, so, okay. So I, I do, I do get why they gave us that. that. That's just because the way Animesh is done is it's actually really, really heavy on the, um, on the viewer. It's, it's done, um, kind of like a whole second avatar for each Animesh attachment. 
more right, or less. Right, which makes it silly to have introduced it. <laughs> <laughs> right, but they, I mean, yes, sure, really what we would then need, though, is we would need the ability to do um, objects with custom skeletons, and the only skeleton in SL that exists is the avatar skeleton, and okay. it would have to write a whole everything to make that happen.